sewing friends, it is I, Eliana, and today I wanted to show you this great little bag I made using a YouTube tutorial, the link to which I will include in the video description below. I'm quite pleased with how this bag came out, and maybe after watching this video you'll be inspired to make your own. So let's see what this bag is made of. The main body of the bag is constructed from these two panels, front and back, connected along their edges by this long strip of rectangular fabric. The example in the video was created out of all one type of fabric, but as you can see, it looks really great when you kind of get creative and combine fabrics. As for the specific material that I used for the front and back panels, I used some regular sort of cotton woven quilting type fabric supported by a heavier weight interfacing. And for the remaining elements, I used some linen, which is nice and soft, yet has a good amount of body. For the inside, I used lining. Nothing special here, just cheap polyester lining. Digging further into the innards of this purse, we have some pockets. On one side, we have a standard sort of fabric rectangular pocket secured to the lining by edge stitching all around. And this pocket is cut to the dimensions suggested by the video tutorial, but after I sewed it on, I decided it was a little wide for my taste, so I went ahead and stitched a line down the middle to create two pockets. Each of the resulting pockets is wide enough to fit an iPhone. So good size pockets, and hey, I ended up with two pockets for the price of one. Now let's flip her over, and on the other side we have a zipper pocket with some lining on the inside. I found that the pocket bag in the tutorial was a little small, so I actually ended up increasing the size of the fabric that was used to create the inside pocket bag. Originally, this pocket was designed, as you'll see in the tutorial, to be placed on the outside of the bag. But what happened in my case is I accidentally started sewing the outside elements to one another before creating that zipper pocket. And that made it very difficult from a measurement standpoint to then put the zipper pocket in. So I decided to just go ahead and make one on the inside. Now, in theory, if you wanted to, you could make two zipper pockets when you make your bag. Have one on the outside and one on the inside. But if you do want to do that, or if you just want a pocket on the outside at all, just bear in mind, word of caution, to go ahead and create that zipper pocket before you start attaching the outside bag elements to one another. The top of the bag is secured with this strap feature, which makes use of two one and a half inch D-rings. The tutorial called for two inch D-rings, but I could only find one and a half inch D-rings in my fabric store, and they work just fine. Like I didn't even change the dimension of the fabric pieces that were called for by the tutorial, and they fit one and a half inch D-rings just fine, FYI. Other hardware used in this project is this sliding rectangular one and a half inch buckle. And as you can see, the strap is pretty long in this bag. It's uh, 52 inches long. And the reason it's long is because it's designed to be worn either as a crossbody bag or as an over the shoulder bag. And so when I wear it in crossbody style, I would extend the strap and when I wear it over the shoulder, I actually shorten it all the way, as you see here. In fact, I think the strap is a little too long. I do prefer to wear the bag over my shoulder, so if I make this bag again, I plan to shorten the strap quite a bit. 
Lastly, in the hardware department, you're going to need a one and a half inch rectangle ring. And that's used to connect this guy here to the rest of the strap. Now, as you can see, there is a rectangle ring only on one side of the bag. Personally, when I was finished with the bag, I found myself a little bothered by the fact that there was only a rectangle ring on one side and it just seemed a little asymmetrical and unbalanced to me. So personally, if I make this bag again, I do plan to add another one to the other side. So essentially, I will be making two of these guys and then connecting them to both sides of the bag. And I think that that will create a little more balance and symmetry in the finished product. But hey, I'm very symmetry sensitive and if you're not quite as symmetry sensitive as I am, then that may not be something that bothers you at all. And that's it, that's my bag. Overall, I really enjoyed making this and I recommend the tutorial at the link in my video description. In terms of experience level, I would recommend this project to anyone who is an advanced beginner and up. Tricky elements of this project include the top stitching uh, and just stitching in general used to connect the straps to the hardware. And there's a tricky bit of sewing involved in connecting the front and back purse panels to the long rectangular strip of fabric that connects them. Whatever your level of sewing experience, you're going to want to make sure that you have a good presser foot on hand to help you create pretty top stitching. Thank you for watching my video and providing me this opportunity to share this fun project with you. Now it's your turn to go make something. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.